Well, the thing with Paul is that um, in Shoot 'Em Up, I learned that his big thing is to play a villain. He loves to play the bad guy, and you know, he likes to sort of go. He goes there, and sometimes in Shoot 'Em Up, maybe he goes a little bit further, you know. And so he he likes and he enjoys. And we talked about other films that we were probably going to work on. And he wanted to play the bad guy every time. Um, and so the other thing about him is he's super super intelligent. And he's a uh, Yale drama graduate and history major. And, um, when we thought the first in the first instance, we thought who's going to play Marshall in the film because that's the lead role and that's the linchpin. We got to get this guy. And we talked about it a lot and talked about the various obvious movie stars that could play that role. And then um, we thought we started to talk about the, the bad guy and um, the villain. And, and the name that we threw around was Paul because. He just saw him and shoot him up. I just worked with him and shoot him up. He likes to play this role. He has all of this background with the history. And we started having serious conversations about not only Miles from Sideways, but also um, at the time, this idea of a leader who inherits the throne as sort of a family um, artifact that's been handed. At the time, W was the president. So, you had a man that was leading the country that maybe some people thought at the time was a little bit in over his head and uh, sometimes he seemed a little bit bumbling and um, there were a lot of, of um, through lines that we could connect to that so we started to talk about Paul in this role and Miles from Sideways in this role and I said look we should just give it a crack because the first thing is, is that he's an amazing actor he's a chameleon and he can just do this kind of stuff yes he's the guy you know, he's Barney, or he's, you know, Miles, or he's whatever, but he's a chameleon. And secondly, is he's super smart, and he probably knows all about this period of history and King John. Lo and behold, we sent it to Paul. He reads the entire script, no offer, just because we worked with him and stuff. And we send it to him, we get a call, he's in. He's, he's the first guy in the movie. He's the first actor we cast in the film. And he loved it, and he stuck with us. You know, this is a big independent film. He stuck with us and did what needed to be done in order to attract other people. And the key idea behind casting Paul first was we talked about him being an actor magnet. And the idea that if you put a guy of his magnitude in the film, that other actors will look at the film in a certain light that they may not look at when it's just a couple of guys saying, here's the script. So you get a guy like Paul in there, you, you anchor it with him. And then you see what comes on around, and, and all of a sudden Brian Cox is getting involved, and then Derek Jacobi's, get, you know, and then James Purifoy at the time was doing. Um, he just came came up. Well, he just he did Solomon Kane, but he was coming off of Rome, where he played Mark Anthony in the HBO series, which was amazing. And we watched scenes of him in Rome, and we thought he was great. <clears throat> and we thought Solomon Kane was going to come out and do really well. So he came on board, and and um, you know this this concept. Plus, you know, it's fun to sort of mess with. Uh, the contemporary idea of what's and what, who should be playing what role and turn it on its head. That kind of stuff I think is interesting.